Currently, this game has no sound at all. I'm going to show you the overall process of how we can add a gunshot sound to this animation sequence using the WISE sound engine. We'll start with a completely blank WISE project. In the upper left hand corner, you'll see the Project Explorer view, and the Audio tab is currently selected. Within the Audio tab, there are three different hierarchies. Hierarchies provide different features and functions depending on what you're trying to accomplish. The majority of your sound design will be done within the Actor Mixer hierarchy. Within a hierarchy, you'll see a default work unit. Work units are ways that people can work on different facets of a project, and then later their work units can be brought together within one overall project. In this case, right-click the default work unit within the Actor Mixer hierarchy. Move down and choose the Import Audio Files option. Within the Dialog window, click the Add Files button, and then navigate to the sound that you intend to import, in this case, the shotgun sound. We'll click Open, and then it's going to verify that you want to bring this sound in as what's called a Sound SFX object. Sound SFX objects are the main type of object used for general sound effects. Confirm by clicking Import. You'll see that the shotgun sound effect has been added underneath the default work unit. By clicking on the shotgun sound, we can see in the Properties Editor, uh, we get what looks kind of like the conventional controls within a digital audio workstation. We have a voice volume control, uh, filter functions, uh, but then there's other features that are more unique to game audio design, such as a pitch control. Below that, we can see in the Shotgun Contents Editor the audio file that was imported, and then we can even see the duration of the file. To verify that the sound was properly imported, and that it sounds like what we want to hear, click the play button in the transport. The next step is to link the sound SFX object that we just created to an event object. Event objects catch the game calls that are indicating what's going on in gameplay, such as the pulling of a shotgun trigger. In the Project Explorer, click the Events tab. And then, within the Events tab, you'll see an Events hierarchy. Select its default work unit. At the top, you'll see a set of icons that represent various types of objects that are compatible with this work unit. Click the Create New Event icon, and a new event object is created. We'll need to name this object with the exact same name that's used for the game call that represents the specific event that we're trying to work with. In this case, fire underscore shotgun underscore player. Now, click the newly created event. A couple of things happen. To the right, you'll see an action list, uh, which is currently empty. An action list basically says, what do we want to have happen when the event is received? Down in the transport control, we can see that the transport control is focused on the fire shotgun player event and not the sound SFX object we imported earlier. The play button is no longer highlighted because there's nothing currently associated with this particular event. We need to change that. Go back to the audio tab in the Project Explorer and then drag the shotgun sound SFX object into the action list. You'll see that the action list indicates that we'll play a shotgun sound when the fire shotgun player event is received. To test this, in the lower left hand corner, select the fire shotgun player event. And again, you'll see that in the transport that it indicates the event uh, that's going to be played. Now, if we click the play button and we hear the shotgun sound, then we've successfully connected the event to this shotgun sound effect. Go ahead and click the play button. We hear our shotgun sound, so we've successfully connected our event to our sound SFX object. The last step is to export a sound bank. A sound bank is the collection of sounds, as well as the code that WISE automatically generates, that will allow the game to incorporate the sounds according to our instructions. To create a sound bank, we're going to use a different layout. A layout is a collection of views built around a specific workflow. In the main menu, choose Layouts, and then select Sound Bank. The view arrangement changes and you'll see that one of the views is called the Sound Bank Manager. Currently, we see a default work unit, 
Within this work unit, we're going to create a new sound bank. Click the New button. Now, we need to name our new sound bank, and the name we use must perfectly match the name we've agreed upon in the game code. In this case, Main. Expand the default work unit, and you'll see our newly created sound bank. Now we're going to add the event that we intend to use with this particular sound bank. Drag the Fire Shotgun Player event into the main sound bank, and it will be added into the sound bank editor. The final step is to generate the sound bank. To do this, we first need to select the main sound bank, then click the platform we intend to generate the sound bank for, and then finally the language we intend to use for localization. The last step is simply to click the Generate button. Now our sound bank is automatically generated, and WISE has automatically created and placed the appropriate code and audio files necessary to play any of the included events into the predefined locations as referenced by the game code. Close the confirmation window, and we can even see that the sound bank is about 93,000 bytes or 93 kilobytes in size. All we need to do now is play the game. Here's our game with our newly generated sound bank, and you can hear that we've been able to successfully integrate the shotgun sound over the animation sequence. So you can see that in just a few minutes, we've been able to take our game from silence to sound.